Good afternoon, dear students. Today we have with you topic of the lecture, anti-inflammatory drugs. Today we'll discuss with you two big groups of drugs, steroidal anti-inflammatory agents and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. So, uh, we'll begin with you from definition of inflammation. Inflammation is a complex protective response of the organism to injury caused by damaging agents. It is aimed at inactivation or removal of these agents and promoting healing. The traditional names for signs of inflammation come from Latin. You know these words, dollar, uh, which means pain, color, which means heat, ruba, which means redness, tuma, um, it means swelling, and functional laser, loss of function. And here we can see with you four signs of inflammation. Four signs, redness, heat, swelling, and pain. Redness and heat due to the local vessel dilation. Swelling due to influx of plasma proteins and phagocytic cells into the tissue spaces. Pain due to local release of enzymes and increased tissue pressure. The main mediators of inflammation are prostaglandins, bradykinin, serotonin, histamine, interleukins, platelet activating factor, gamma interferon, tumor necrosis factor, transforming growth factor, and lymphoma. The main role of some biological active substances in the body, um, the main mediators of inflammation, prostaglandin E2. So it is uh, releasing is accompanied with vasodilation, bronchodilation, inhibition of gastric acid secretion, stimulation of gastric mucus secretion, sensitization of P receptors to chemical and mechanical stimuli promotion to anterior pituitary hormones release. Prostaglandin A2 alpha, uterus contraction, bronchoconstriction, decrease in intraocular tension, tromoxane A2, produced, you know, by platelets. Uh, production of these biological active substances leads to the induction of platelet invocation. Vasoconstriction. Prostaglandin E2 leads uh, to the inhibition of platelet aggregation and potent vasodilations. Uh, the main representative of these prostaglandins uh, it is prostacyclins, which has opposite effect to the tromboxane. And you know that the main enzyme which is inhibited by the Main group of anti-inflammatory drugs, non-steroidal, this is cyclooxygenase. And we have to discuss with you role and types of this enzyme. Cyclooxygenase exists in the tissue as constitutive isoform. This type is COX-1 constitutively expressed in wide variety of cells all over the body. So in physiological conditions. It means like housekeeping enzyme exists to gastric cytoprotection, hemostasis, it plays a role in maintaining gastrointestinal mucosal linen, kidney function and platelet aggregation. Cyclooxygenase at site of inflammation, cytokines steam the induction of the second isoform, COX-2. In this simple enzyme, dramatically upregulated during inflammation, 
and division of COX2 is thought to be due to the anti-inflammatory action of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Inhibition of COX-1 is responsible for their gastrointestinal drug toxicity. Most currently used NSAIDs, this is abbreviation of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, are somewhat selective for COX-1, but selective COX-2 inhibitors are available too. So we'll begin to discuss with you the group non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The abbreviation and say that I told you at previous slide. And we'll begin with you from the classification. So the classification due to the mechanism of action. I told you that these drugs they inhibit cyclooxygenase and um, drugs which non-selective COX inhibitors which block both and COX-1 and COX-2. There are salicylates, acetyl salicylic acid uh, uh, is very famous and known as the drug aspirin. Pyrazolone derivatives, metamazole, and all derivatives, endometacin. Propionic acid derivatives, naproxen, ibuprofen, ketoprofen, dexketoprofen, fluorbiprofen, and naproxen. Anthronylic acid derivatives, methanemic acid, aryl acetic acid derivatives, very popular drug, which is diclofenac sodium, acyclofenac. Oxycam derivatives, pyroxicam, tenoxicam, dehydropyrrolysine, carboxylic acid derivative, ketorolac. The next group of drug, drugs which blocks COX selectively. Selective COX inhibitors, preferential COX-2 inhibitors, nemosulide, Meloxicam, Nabomethone, Etodelec, and selective COX-2 inhibitors, Celecoxib, Paracoxib, Proficoxib, Etoricoxib, and Valdecoxib. So, and um, it is important to pay attention that these drugs cause a little gastric mucosa damage due to the inhibition of the COX-2 enzyme. They do not inhibit platelet aggregation. So act by inhibiting cyclooxygenesis. It means that there is no prostaglandin production. There are three types of COX. We discuss with you COX-1 and COX-2. COX-1 considerably express uh, and um, the main role is housekeeping function. COX-2 induced by pro-inflammatory factors, so in the play of inflammation. COX-3 just recently discovered. Prostaglandins do not cause pain, but synthesize nostril receptors to stimulation. By 5-HT, bradykinin, capsaicin. Interleukin 1 released from activated macrophages, bacteria, etc. Induce COX-2 in the brain. Prostaglandin A produced effects thermoregulation, uh, leads to the fever, and says they block cyclooxygenase, and it means that they have antipyretic effects, antipyretic activity. Classical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they give it both COX-1 and COX-2. Inhibition is reversible with the exception of acetyl salicylic acid, and the main name is aspirin. So, lead to the decreasing of the level of housekeeping prostaglandins and leads to the side effects, main side effects, gastrointestinal, bronchospasm, 
The second generation non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, specific um, to COX-2, which inhibit selectively COX-2, they um, have only the inflammatory responses inhibited. And uh, it means that they have less side effects. The main mechanism of anti-inflammatory drugs action, anti-inflammatory drugs action, especially for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So I'll show to you. So uh, you know that the main components of cell membrane, which synthesized to the destroying of cell membrane during inflammation, phospholipids. So then, uh, arachidonic acid is synthesized from phospholipids, and uh, the enzyme which plays the role in this one, this is phospholipase A2. Then arachidonic, uh, arachidonic acid is transformed to cyclic endoperoxidases. So endoperoxidases are prostaglandins and thromboxane. Prostaglandins leads to the inflammation, pain, prefer thromboxane leads to the vasoconstriction and increasing of platelet aggregation. And I want to pay attention that there are two main groups of drugs with anti-inflammatory activity. Glucocorticosteroids, or another name, steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, which blocks phospholipase A2. And uh, the drugs that we discuss with you non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they block enzyme cyclooxygenases. The main pharmacological effects of NSAIDs, anti-inflammatory, analgesic, decrease the pain, antipyretic, decrease the temperature, antiplatelet, Usually, we use acetyl salicylic acid with antiplatelet effect and closure of ductus arteriosus in newborn. Clinical uses of NSAIDs. So, in what disease will you administer this group of drug? We use it in pain headache, toothache, myalgia, back pain. In the case of fever, during sickness, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, gout, which also is accompanied with the symptoms of arthritis, and also Ankylosing spondylitis. Dysmenorrhea, especially ibuprofen, is used in this. Enclosure of ductus arteriosus. For prevention of myocardial infection, we use this drug for stroke and reinfection. So, the drug which is um, used for the last therapeutic usage is acetyl salicylic acid. So the main side effects of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, gastrointestinal, peptic ulcer, and multiple necrosis, erosive damaging of large and small intestines, the mechanism of these um, gastric adverse effects are likely due to the inhibition of COX-1. I paid attention on this one. I told you that inhibition of COX-1, inhibition of housekeeping prostaglandins. So it leads to the prevention, the creation of prostaglandins that protect the gastric mucosa. The damage is more likely in patients that has a prior history of peptic ulcers. 
since it is COX-1 specific, the use of COX to select event state is a low risk alternative. So uh, we have to determine with your risk benefit and to choose correct drug. If you know about answer of the stomach of the duodenum in anamnesis of the patient. Then kidney, reversible acute kidney insufficiency. What electrolyte disorders, chronic kidney insufficiency, and interstitial fibrosis, interstitial nephritis, nephritic syndrome. Renal adverse effects are the COX, COX-1, and COX-2 facilitated the production of prostaglandins that play a role in renal hemodynamics. In a patient with normal renal function, inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis does not pose large problem. However, in patients with renal dysfunction, these prostaglandins play a greater role and can be the source of problems when reduced via non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Complications that can occur include acute renal dysfunction, fluid and electrolyte disorders, uh, renal papillary necrosis and nephrotic syndrome that uh, I told you. Cardiovascular, increasing of the arterial hypertension is the main side effect of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Increasing of static cardiac insufficiency and increasing of stenocardia. Cardiovascular adverse effects can also be increased when the end state use. So these include maybe also um, myocardial infarction, maybe thromboembolic events and atrial fibrillation. Diclofenac seems to be the an assays with the highest reported increase in adverse cardiovascular events. So remember about it. And um, I want to tell you that selective COX-2 inhibitors, especially cox that leads uh, to the thrombosis. Then liver, increasing of transaminases level, life-treating liver insufficiency. So adverse effects, um, which um, is in connection with the, uh, the liver function disorder can also uh, be increased with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory use. And um, um, hepatic adverse effects are less, less common, sorry. And states associate risk of hepatotoxicity uh, is not very common. And liver-related hospitalization is very rare. So among the various non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, diclofenac has a high rate of hepatotoxicity effects. CNS um, disorders may be headache, somnolence, confusion, disorders of behavior, and aseptic meningitis. Also, blood system, the hematological adverse effects are possible, particularly with non-selective non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug due to their anti blood related activity. So and we have the main adverse effect, this is thrombocytopenia. The anti blood related effect typically only poses a problem if the patient has also a history of the gastrointestinal ulcer. A disease that impair platelet activity, thrombocytopenia, von Willebrand, hemophilia, and in some perioperative cases. Maybe hernalocytopenia and aplastic anemia. Boys join the disorder of cartilage, maybe, and um, another side effects increasing of asthma, skin rash. So, allergic reaction. Contraindications for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So, they are contraindicated for pregnant women, hemophilic patients, 
in the case of hypersensitivity reactions, also viral infections mainly in children, so especially for acetyl salicylic acid, it can cause Bray syndrome, we'll discuss it later, and peptic ulcers are also contraindicated for usage of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory Drugs interaction. Potency is the gastrokeratin effect of alcohol, so it is contraindicated uh, with uh, alcohol usage. Potency is the hypoglycemic effects of oral hypoglycemic drugs. Diuretics decrease diuresis if we use it together with uh, NSAIDs. Beta blockers decrease antihypertensive effect. AC inhibits us, and anti-converting enzyme inhibitors decrease the antihypertensive effect. Anticoagulants, if we use together with NSAID, can lead to the increasing of gastrointestinal bleeding. Cyclosporine increases nephrotoxicity. Glucocorticosteroids or steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs increase also the gastro intestinal bleeding. Uh, then, and now we'll discuss with you about um, drugs which are used nowadays very very often. The salicylates, acetyl salicylic acid, duration of action about four hours it is already taken, weak acid, hydrolyzed uh, by aspirases in tissue and blood, more salicylase conversion in liver, and rapidly excreted by kidneys. Acetyl salicylic acid it is used as antipyretic analgesic agents. Anti-inflammatory, it is used for the treatment of rheumatic fever, rheumatoid arthritis, dry disease, and another rheumatological disease. But um, for treatment of this disease, very high dose is needed, about 5 to 8 grain per day. But many patients cannot tolerate these doses. So, prophionic is for preventives, Ibuprofen, naproxen, try to use first. Prophylaxis of disease due to platelet abrogation. And also, um, I want to pay attention that acetyl salicylic acid is used for the treatment of preeclampsia and hypertension during pregnancy. Contraindication for acetyl salicylic acid in patients who are sensitive to it and allergic reaction and in peptic ulcer and bleeding. In children suffering from chicken pox or influenza due to the risk of Reyes syndrome, it means liver encephalopathy can appear in children due to the usage of acetyl salicylic acid. In chronic liver disease, cases of hepatic necrosis have been reported. Acetyl salicylic acid should be stopped one week before elective surgery, dental expression, because of the reason that this drug can cause bleeding. Also, the main drug which is used nowadays, very, very often, very common drug, this is ibuprofen. Pharmacokinetics of this drug, it rapidly absorbs, it is rapidly absorbed after all ingestion. Half life, one to hours, one to hours, sorry, highly bound to plasma proteins excreted through kidney as metabolites. 
ibuprofen, the same mechanism and uh, the same pharmacological actions as acetyl salicylic acid, as aspirin, except that it is reversible inhibitor for COX enzymes. More potent as anti-inflammatory than acetyl salicylic acid. Clinical uses. It is used as an analgesic, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory, and also in acute cardiac arthritis. Pattern doctors are to reverse and children. Preparations of ibuprofen. There are several forms of ibuprofen. Maybe oral preparations, topical cream, which I use for osteoarthritis, a liquid gel, gel, gel for rapid relief of post-surgical dental pain. Dermal patch also an intravenous route as in patient doctors at rewards. Adverse effects of ibuprofen, gastric upset, less frequent than acetyl salicylic acid. Fluid retention, which leads to the edema and can lead to increase of arterial pressure. Hypersensitivity reactions, now don't forget about the allergic reaction. Maybe ocular disturbances and rare hematological effects, erythromocytosis and a plastic enemy. Contraindications. Ibuprofen is contraindicated to the patient with peptic ulcer, with allergic patients to also to acetyl salicylic acid. Kidney impairment, liver disease, it is contraindicated in pregnancy, and hemophilic patients. The concomitant administration of ibuprofen antagonizes the irreversible platelet inhibition of acetyl salicylic acid. So remember, if we use acetyl salicylic acid, for example, aspirin cardiol as um, anti aggregant drug, ibuprofen can decrease this anti platelet activity and limit cardioprotective effect of spirin. Diclofenac is also used nowadays very often. Mechanism of action the same as ibuprofen. It is non-selective inhibitor for COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. More potent as anti-inflammatory than analgesic and antipyretics. Clinical uses. It is used as anti-inflammatory conditions. So, it is used in any, any inflammatory conditions. Musculoskeletal pain, dysmenorrhea, acute gout arthritis, fever, locally to prevent or treat post of thalamic inflammation. And also used as topical gel for solar keratosis. It was effects of Diclofenac, also the same as ibuprofen, acetylcellic acid, gastric upset, then renal impairment, elevation of serum aminotransferases. I paid your attention that diclofenac has a hepatotoxicity. And um, salt and water retention, that can also lead to the increasing of arterial pressure. So, and uh, be careful during administration to the patient with higher blood pressure. Preparations of diclofenac. Diclofenac, diclofenac with misoprostol decrease upper gastrointestinal ulceration, but result in diarrhea. So, um, you know this drug is misoprostol. It is a prostaglandin E, which is used for the treatment of gastritis, which is caused by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. 
Back of the neck with all my Brazil to prevent recurrent bleeding. So, I'm a Brazil, you remember this is the drug which uh, is proton pump inhibitor. And we use it together with non steroid anti inflammatory agents. If we use it for a long period of time to prevent fracture bleeding, alteration also. One percentage of ophthalmic preparation for post operative ophthalmic inflammation. So, this preparation of diclofenac is used in ophthalmology. A topical gel. 3% for solar doses and rectal suppository as analgesic or for post-operative nausea. Selective COX-2 inhibitors we discuss with you um, such drug as uh, nimesulide, Add to the leg, meloxicam, nebulmetone, and uh, the advantages of these drugs, they are highly selective and give it as COX-2 enzymes. They have potent anti-inflammatory activity, have analgesic and antibiotic properties, and highly bound to plasma proteins. Selective COX-2 inhibitors, they have lower incidence of gastric upset and no effect on platelet replication uh, because they don't affect COX-1 enzyme. Also, uh, pay attention that um, they can cause renal toxicity. And they are not recommended for patients with uh, severe renal insufficiency. High incidence of cardiovascular thrombotic events with some of them as rafecoxib, which can lead to the thrombosis. And um, it was known in randomized clinical trials. So, also, they are recommended in post-operative patients undergoing bone repair. Also, it is indicated in primary familial adenomatose for liposes, dysmenorrhea, acute gouty arthritis, acute musculoskeletal pain, and ankylosing spondylitis. Also, selective COX-2 inhibitors, they are recommended in post-operative patients and the bone repair. Also indicated in primary, familial adenomatous polyposis, dysmenorrhea, acute gouty, arthritis, acute musculoskeletal pain, and ankylosing spondylitis. <clears throat> Nimesulite is selective inhibitors of COX-2. So, it inhibits inflammation process and um, <clears throat> it does not affect the synthesis of thromboxane. Also, I want to pay your attention that nemesulite can lead to the liver function disorder, can lead to the liver insufficiency severe liver insufficiency, also to severe allergic reaction, a severe skin disease, which um, is allergic. And I want to pay attention that the um, usual cause of usage of nemesolite is about five, seven days. <coughs> So, no more than two weeks because of side effects of these drugs. Meloxicam um, are used in rheumatoid arthritis. Coxibs are also 
very often are used in rheumatism. And <clears throat> I want to discuss with you two drugs which are used very, very, very common. One drug is uh, metamizole, which inhibits both COX-1 and COX-2. But this drug um, doesn't help for uh, anti-inflammatory activity. Usually it is used as antipyretic and as an analgesic drug. So this drug is contraindicated for usage in a lot of a lot of country in Europe, in the United States of America, in Australia. But it is used in uh, Russian Federation, it is used in India. So, and um, <clears throat> I want to pay your attention so that the usage of um, metamizole is limited in these countries due to the agronocytosis, a plastic anemia, also kidney damage lead to the nephritis, gabotitis, alveolitis, and severe skin disease. And I want to pay attention on paracetamol. Paracetamol, this is the drug which um, uh, doesn't have also anti-inflammatory activity. It has only analgesic and antipyretic activity. Paracetamol and give it the synthesis of prostaglandins in the central nervous system. So that's why it has a central analgesic and antipyretic activity. Um, paracetamol is the most preferable drug um, and um, deceived drug. But you have to remember that during long usage of paracetamol leads to the nephropathy and can lead to the terminal kidney insufficiency. So um, nephrotoxic action of metabolites of paracetamol and you have to remember about hepatotoxicity of paracetamol, especially in usage of big dose. So the main antidote in the case of overdosage, overdosage of paracetamol, it is donate of glutathione. This is acetylcysteine. And I want to tell you that two drugs, paracetamol and ibuprofen, are indicated for usage in children. And other drugs are contraindicated. So now break five minutes and then we'll continue.
steroidal anti-inflammatory steroidal uh, drugs. They are divided into several groups due to the time of action. Short acting glucocorticoid, natural, hydrocortisone, cortisone, intermediate acting glucocorticoid, prednisone, very famous prednisolone, now it is popular methyl prednisolone, triamcinolone. Lone actin, beta metazone, dexamethasone is also very popular nowadays, and parametazone. Typically, actin glucocorticoids. I want to tell you that we can divide this group of drugs into two drugs for inhale, inhale glucocorticoids, there are beclometazone, budesonide, fluticasone. Also, Triamcinolone also can be used as some um, inhale glucocorticoids and drugs which are used topically on skin in cream fluocinolone, fluocortolone, betametazone, clobestazone. So you can see in this picture uh, the main agents of glucocorticoids, then the dose for these drugs in tablet suspensions and the dose in injections. So we see that betamethasone, there are drugs formed in tablets and suspension also in injections. For dexamethasone, uh, injection for hydrocortisone and tablets and injection. Methylprednisolone, the tablets which has uh, four 16 milligrams uh, and um, four G80 milligrams by milliliter for <clears throat> drugs, drugs which includes methylprednisolone for injections. Also, we see with you uh, methylpred and the big dose uh, 500 mg to 8 milliliter. Prednisolone, it is used in suspension and in tablets. Prednisolone in tablets and also we have with you in injections from several forms, drug forms. So here we have with you classification due to the potency of uh, glucocorticoids weak, but I want to your, um, pay attention uh, that the main drug for cream. So drugs which are used locally on skin area. So hydrocortisone acetate, hydrocortisone is weak. Um, glucocorticoid uh, moderate, uh, there are betamethasone, valerate, fluticasone, propionate, hydrocortisone, and uh, potent uh, fluoxenolone, which is used in ointment gel, cream, cream and uh, ointment also. So, um, diflucortolone, Methylprednisolone also can be used in cream ointment and mamethasone with potent activity from glucocorticoids which are used topically on the skin and very potent it is new drug clobetazole propionate. Remember these drugs which are used topically on the skin. So, and also uh, there is a uh, classification due to the um, chemical peculiarities of glucocorticoids. Natural, I told you about uh, this uh, uh, several minutes ago, it is hydrocortisone. 
synthetic drugs. So she had treated prednisolone, methylprednisolone, which belongs to synthetic agents, fluorinated dexamethasone, triamcinolone, defluorinated fluorcinolone acetonide, the name of the drug is sinaflan, trifluorinated fluticazone, and fluorinated agents beclamethasone, which is a famous uh, drug name. Vicotides. So synthetic preparations have less effect on water salt metabolism. They are more important as drugs of non-specific therapy. They are stronger and more durable. So we can see with you that hydrocortisone compared to activity spread is alone four times upper than hydrocortisone, triamcinolone five. 7.5, dexamethasone 20, 30 times up uh, um, in hydrocortisone. So you have to understand that um, duration of action of hydrocortisone about 8 to 12 hours. Prednisolone 18.36, trimsonolone is about 48. 48 hours and uh, dexamethasone up to 72 hours. So the most long time of action for dexamethasone and we discussed it during um, classification due to the time of action. Effects of metabolism. You know that glucocorticoids natural, they are hormones of uh, adrenal glands. And we, you have to know all effects of glucocorticoids. If you know, you'll understand the effects of, on metabolism. Glucocorticoids act intracellular. They interact with specific receptors in the cellular cytoplasm. The receptor becomes activated and this leads to its conformational alterations. So effects of metabolism, the complex steroid plus receptor penetrates into the nucleus of the cell and binds with the DNA. It stimulates the production of specific mRNA that affects the synthesis of proteins and Carbonhydrate metabolism. They increase glucose level in the blood. They inhibit hexokinase, decrease the utilization of glucose, increase gluconeogenesis, increase glycogen deposition in the liver, and um, I want to pay attention that glucocorticoids can cause steroid diabetes mellitus. The name of this disease due to the increasing of the level of glucose in the cases of usage glucocorticoids it is steroid diabetes mellitus. Protein metabolism. They accelerate protein catabolism, so it means negative nitrogen balance and inhibit protein synthesis. They delay the regenerative process and growth of the children. So remember that um, during usage of glucocorticoids, especially long periods of time, they will be influenced the regeneration of the tissue during trauma, during operation. So pay attention that they delay the regenerative process. They improve protein synthesis in the liver, erythropoietin, surfactant, lipomodulin, insulin, histamine, and antitoxic liver function. Glucocorticoids are used in the treatment of hepatitis and acute poisoning.
fat metabolism. They cause the redistribution of fat. The name of uh, syndrome which is appearing during usage of glucocorticoids for long periods of uh, time, cushion syndrome. It means accumulation of a considerable amount of fat on the face. It means crescent-shaped face and dorsal part of the neck and shoulders. What is salt metabolism? The retained sodium in the body, reabsorption in the renal tubules is increased. It leads to the increasing of the volume circulating blood and leads to the increasing of arterial pressure. Don't forget about it because glucocorticoids can increase arterial pressure and we have to remember about it. Also, glucocorticoid increases the secretion of potassium and calcium. So, glucocorticoids uh, can cause hypokalemia. It means decreasing of the level of potassium. And also, glucocorticoids, they prevent absorption of the calcium in the gastrointestinal tract and leads to the increasing of the secretion with kidneys of calcium. So, and um, due to the rotation of sodium, they increasing the plasma volume that I told you, that increasing blood pressure. And due to the decrease of the level of calcium, it leads to the osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can occur. And the next picture we can see with you people with cushion syndrome. So, cushion syndrome is the caused by prolonged exposure to elevated levels of either endogenous glucocorticoids or exogenous glucocorticoids. So we can see osteoporosis, compress vertebra. So due to the long usage of glucocorticoids, with these red cheeks, you can see moon face, then fat pads, of buffalo hump, ecchymosis also, then thin skin, high blood pressure, we discussed it due to the increasing of the water salt retention and um, uh, increasing of blood pressure, then thin arms and legs, pay attention so remember that the fat is accumulated upper face, um, neck, upper shoulders, but arms and legs are thin. Then you can see breast striation, pendulous abdomen, and prevent healing due to the increasing of catabolism of the proteins, which leads to the decreasing of regeneration. The main effects of glucocorticoids, now we discuss with you inflammation today, so of course glucocorticoids, they have anti-inflammatory and um, you can see, you can meet um, the charm and abbreviation steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Also, they have anti-allergic and immunosuppressive effect. Antitoxic effect, anti-cancer effect, it is used for the treatment of leukemia, and effect on the cardiovascular system. Anti-inflammatory effect of glucocorticoids. So, glucocorticoids induced by synthesis of special proteins, lipocartins. And then give it phospholipase A2. Do you remember the picture that I showed to you during discussing the mechanism of action of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs? 
that uh, arachidonic acid, arachidonic acid is synthesized from phospholipids. And uh, the main enzyme which uh, acts on the transformation of phospholipids to arachidonic acid is phospholipase A2. So glucocorticoids, they inhibit this enzyme, phospholipase A2, and leads to the decrease of the production of arachidonic acid and leads to the production of prostanoids, leukotrienes also because it inhibits not only cyclooxygenase we uh, transformation but also lipooxygenase we from arachidonic acid. Also, it inhibits the platelet activity factor and they suppress all stages of inflammation, all stages, and they are active in hyperergic inflammation also. So, alteration, they reduce tissue damage, the formation of free radicals, stabilize the cell membrane, the release of uh, lysosomal enzymes, and they decrease the formation of antibodies and immune complexes, their deposition on cell membrane. But this is the mechanism of anti-inflammatory action of steroidal anti-inflammatory duct that I told you. That they inhibit phospholipase A2 and inhibit lipoxygenase and cyclooxygenase V. Due to the inhibition of lipoxygenase V, there is inhibition of leukotrienes and the inhibition of cyclooxygenase V it leads to the inhibition of prostaglandins, thromboxane, and one type of prostaglandins is prostacyclin, cyclin, prostacyclin. Effects on the cardiovascular system of glucocorticoids. They increase blood volume. Yes. Uh, we discuss it due to the increase of water salt retention. They reduce for this, but increase the breakdown of histamine. And they increase the sensitivity of receptors to catecholamines, normalize microcirculation, microcirculation, improve atrioventricular conduction, increase heart rate and increase blood pressure. Also, glucocorticoids are applied in shock of any origin, in sepsis, hypoxia, cerebral edema, intracranial hemorrhages, intoxication, hepatitis and cirrhosis. Natural glucocorticoids are used in acute and chronic chronic adrenal insufficiency, Edison disease. Effects on hematopoiesis. Glucocorticoids increase the amount of reticulocytes and erythrocytes. So they are used for the treatment of hypo and aplastic anemia, hemolytic anemia. They increase the number of neutrophils produce the amount of eosinophils, low the number of lymphocytes, mass of thymus, lymphodens, and they are used in the treatment of leukemia. So um, the main indications for usage of glucocorticoids we can divide it into an intensive care and limited and long-term therapy. So in intensive care, we have to use the drug in all kinds of shock and um, especially that uh, they use intravenous and as a desperate measure in septic shock, the volume is doubtful. So also we use it in anaphylactic shock. It is used in swelling of the brain and lungs, sepsis, asthmatic status, serum sickness, 
and Queen Kadima or oh, I'm going to watch Kadima that the name of this Queen Kadima and the limited and long term therapy we use in the connective tissue disease rheumatism systemic global rheumatosis in arthritis so corticosteroids are one of the last research drugs and to be used in conjunction with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs when disease and disability continue to progress despite other measures. Uh, we have to use uh, or to keep those to minimum. Osteoarthritis, usually uh, we use uh, for treat this disease with NSAIDs, non-steroidal, uh, systemic usage of corticosteroid is very, very rare. Can be used intra-article injections of the steroid uh, for control and acute exacerbation. In rheumatic fever, corticosteroids are used uh, in severe case. In girl, corticosteroids, in short course, should only be used and acute gout arthritis uh, only in the case uh, when non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs have failed to afford relief. Collagen disease, uh, disease the systemic lupus erythematosis, polyarthritis, nodosa, dermatomyositis, nephrotic syndrome, glomerulonephritis, and related disease need corticosteroids. And um, usage of this drug may be life saving. So, therapy generally started with high dose, which are tip to maintain those when remission occurs. We use it in bronchial asthma, in chronic pneumonia. So, uh, you know that I um, told you that glucocorticoids are used in asthmatic status. In severe chronic asthma, a supplement to bronchodilators. So, in gale, beclometazone, a low dose oral therapy is given for all periods of period. Can use buddhisanite, also can use fluticasone. And Early institution of NGM glucocorticoid therapy is now recommended in most cases with more than mild asthma. And uh, short courses of oral steroids may be used to tide over acute exacerbation. In the case of acute exacerbation, maybe injections. So glucocorticoids um, are used for systemic usage. Uh, also, corticosteroids benefit the aspiration, pneumonia, and pulmonary edema from droning. Given during late pregnancy, corticosteroids accelerate lung motivation in the fetus and prevent respiratory distress syndrome at birth. Such therapy may be undertaken in premature delivery is contemplated. Also, we use it in hepatitis, in cirrhosis, in nephritis, oh, we use it eczema psoriasis, also in transplanted um, um, rejection syndrome. So high dose of glucocorticoids are given along with other immunosuppressant agents to prevent rejection reaction followed by low maintenance dose. So, and also uh, we use um, corticosteroids in um, preg um, sorry in malignance leukemia. So corticoids are an essential component of combined chemotherapy of acute lymphatic leukemia, Hodgkin's and other lymphomas. Because uh, of their market um, lymphatic action in these conditions. They have a secondary place in hormone responsive breast carcinoma. Corticosteroids also afford symptomatic relief in other advanced malignants by improving appetite and controlling secondary 
hyper -cartinium. Also, um, they are used in eye disease. Corticosteroids are used in a large number of inflammatory ocular disease, may prevent blindness. Topical inflammation as eye drops or ointment is effective in disease of the anterior chamber. An allergic conjunctivitis, neuritis, bradycyclitis. Ordinary steroids should not be used in ineffective conditions. But if inflammation is severe, so they may be applied in conjunction with an effective antibiotic. Steroids are contraindicated in herpes simplex schematitis and in ocular injuries. So remember, in herpes simplex heritages and ocular injuries, glucocorticoids are contraindicated. So also the um, topical corticosteroids are widely employed and are highly effective in many eczematous skin disease. Exfoliative dermatitis and also in CST and Jones syndrome. Also, these drugs can be used. Also, I want to your attention that um, Glucocorticoids also are used in cerebral edema due to tumors, tubercular meningitis, uh, which responds to corticosteroids. Dexamethasone or betamethasone are preferred because they do not have sodium retaining activity, so they will not increase uh, water balance in the human organism. Uh, the value uh, on traumatic and post-stroke cerebral edema is questionable. So large doses given soon after spinal injury may reduce the result of neurological sequela. So on this scheme we see with you all clinical uses of steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that we discuss with you uh, one slide ago. So also we use um, glucocorticosteroids as um, substitution therapy, substitution therapy, adrenal insufficiency, and all these disease that you see this slide we discuss with you. Also in uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease we use it uh, so in intestinal disease I didn't tell about it so um, this is chronic inflammation intestinal disease and uh, maybe in phase of remission or in the phase of exacerbation and uh, corticosteroids are indicated during acute phases. So maybe use orally, maybe enema, and if not responding to five amino salicylic acid compounds and other measures we have for administer glucocorticoids. So remember these main therapeutic usage, main indications for glucocorticoids. The main side effects of steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Of course, if you know all effects of glucocorticoids, you understand the main side effects. It is, of course, a susceptibility to infections due to the immunodepressant activity. Delayed healing of wounds, we discussed it, due to the increase of protein catabolism. Osteoporosis due to the decrease of the calcium level in the human organism, growth retardation in children. So remember about it because um, even uh, with small dose, if given for a long period, uh, it can lead to the growth retardation in children. 
also cushion syndrome hyperglycemia muscular weakness maybe proximal shoulder arm pelvic my particles occasionally due to the withdrawal of corticosteroids corticoids psychic disorders maybe mild euphoria frequently accompanies high dose steroid treatment these may rarely progress to manic psychosis so these may rarely progress to psychosis maybe nervousness decreased sleep and mood changes maybe also no really a depressive illness uh, may be precipitated no usually psychosis and uh, don't forget about withdrawal syndrome and suppression of hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis can lead to the adrenal insufficiency don't forget about contraindications for glucocorticoids it is peptic ulcer diabetes mellitus hypertension viral and fungal infection due to immunosuppressive activity tuberculosis and other infections osteoporosis herpes simplex keratitis psychosis epilepsy chronic heart failure and renal failure all these diseases remember they are contraindicated for glucocorticoid usage on this slide i want to explain to you how to use glucocorticoid and um, better to use it in the morning do you see this tablet so of course better to use in the morning to use the dose it is excellent um, preferable until eight o'clock why um, is it better to use glucocorticoids in the morning so it is used in the morning to prevent adrenal insufficiency um, there is um, synthesis of hormone and you have to remember about feedback what does it mean feedback if you give those of hormone in the morning then the quantity of hormones will be decrease do you see the concentration of hormone will be decrease then the impulse will go to the hypothalamus in the case of decreasing of the level of glucocorticoid nature of that in our organism hypothalamus will facilitate impulse to hypothesis to release of adrenocorticotropic hormone and releases of adrenocorticotropic hormone will stimulate the natural glucocorticoids so and the level of natural glucocorticoids also will be increase in the morning will give in the morning glucocorticoids will get effect of these drugs then they will be decreased and opposite negative feedback impulse to the hypothalamus and stimulation of natural glucocorticoids and uh, of course i want to pay your attention that uh, we cannot stop to use glucocorticoids immediately because we afraid withdrawal syndrome 
how to prevent this withdrawal syndrome? We have to decrease the dose of glucocorticoids gradually. We cannot stop to use it immediately. It is a big mistake of the doctor. So you have to explain to your patient how to use the drug and to prevent the main side effects of this drug, adrenal insufficiency and withdrawal syndrome. On this slide, you can see contraindication that I told you during discussing the side effects of the glucocorticoid and say no to any drug formulation combined with steroids. Remember that steroids are life-saving drugs, but they have a lot of side effects. And uh, know the follow conditions where you have to be extremely cautious. Peptic ulcer, contraindication in the case of exacerbation. In cautions, you can be during hypertension and diabetes mellitus. You know that nowadays, uh, during uh, COVID disease, glucocorticoids are used very, very often. And uh, very severe situation, and the patients, um, is characterized for the patient with uh, uh, diabetes mellitus and usually they are suffering not only from diabetes mellitus but also from hypertension and during an administration glucocorticoids during COVID for prevention of cytotoxic storm it is obligatory mm -hmm. to control for all people arterial pressure and if you know that the patient is suffering from diabetes mellitus also it is obligatory to control sugar level to prevent um, complication uh, of this disease also in viral and fungal infections they are contraindicated um, and uh, osteoporosis uh, and epilepsy and psychosis uh, and I told you that chronic heart failure and renal failure are contraindications for usage of uh, glucocorticoids. The main antagonists of glucocorticoids are uh, which inhibits uh, 11 hydroxylase in adrenal context and prevents synthesis of hydrocortisone and also the uh, glucocorticoid antagonist that you have to know this is antiprogestin the name of this drug is mifepriston and mifepriston acts as a glucocorticoid receptor antagonist as well so it has been used in cushion syndrome but blockade or feedback of adrenocorticotropic hormone inhibition leads to over secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone and more hydrocortisone is produced which tends to annual the glucocorticoid receptor blocking action on for the mifepristone so remember two main antagonists of glucocorticoids that are metirapone and mifepristone Preston. So, um, I will try to explain to you the main two groups uh, of drugs which are used in inflammation. We discuss with you and the non-steroidal and the steroidal anti-inflammatory agents which are used very common in any specialty of doctor uh, which you choose you use this group of drugs and you have to remember about the main effects of these drugs about side effects of the drugs about interactions 
and of course don't forget about contraindication of this drug. All these things we discuss with you, I tried to, to pay attention to discuss fully. And uh, if you have a question, ask me question. And uh, now our lecture is finishing. And uh, I want to tell you thank you. We'll see you. Goodbye.